P-H-D. One more time. P-H-D. Go, Sleepy Pepper Guy. You're number one. P-H-D. Yes. Hi, I'm Jonathan Van Ness. Welcome back to my channel. It is a new year. It is a new time. Hello, 2022. You're gorgeous. And I know normally we do like a gorgeous hair school, but I'm getting so many questions about life. So welcome to our first episode of Life School, where I'm really just going to answer like all your questions about like life stuff. I don't know why you would ask me. I've been through some crazy stuff, so, but maybe I'll give you some good answers. Let's go. <laughs> Kate O wants to know, what keeps you so positive every day? You seem to wake up grinning and singing. Okay, Kate, oh, I am literally, I am a morning person. I don't know what my problem is. I actually think it's because I'm like obsessed with coffee and I get so, like when I wake up, I'm so excited to go downstairs and make coffee and see my kitty cat cooters and my cute little puppies. So maybe it's cats, dogs, and coffee. Cats, dogs, coffee. Yeah, and also I just, but, but you know what I should also say, Kate? I'm not always that, just always that happy. Not every morning do I wake up like, super excited. Um, I do I do feel really so grateful and excited most of the time when I wake up, but sometimes I am a little depressed, right? I'm a little anxious, and I might not coffee dance on those days. And I think it's also remember important to remember that like what folks put on their Instagram or their YouTube or like on a TV show, a lot of times that's like the best versions of themselves. So just know that everyone is dealing with like a shadow side and hard times in their life. And yeah, so I'm not always this positive. Ask my husband. <laughs> um, yeah. Claire Voss 77 wants to know, how do you know when it's the right time to make a big change in your life, like moving to a new city? Mm, Claire, good question. How do we know when it's the right time in our life to make a big change? As impulsively as humanly possible. No, just kidding, don't do that. Um, I think Buddha says like there's like a, I'm paraphrasing here, but something like there's like a lot of paths to the top of the mountain. So everyone's going to like experience those life changes differently. For some people, they get a whim, they follow through on that whim. For other people, it's like a little seed and then they start to think about it. Then the seed sprouts into a little plant. And the next thing they know, there's like a huge tree and they're like, oh my God, a tree, I'm moving. According to Elizabeth Gilbert's second book, she was the author of Eat, Pray, Love. Her second book is A Skeptic Makes Peace with Marriage. In that book, she talks about this study about like the five most traumatizing things that will happen during anyone's life. And like moving cities is one of them. It's like the fifth one. It's like loss of spouse, loss of child, getting fired from a job, like loss of a parent and like moving. Like, so do think about it when you're changing cities because it does take a long time. And especially if you're like in the like service or like beauty industry, you have to like rebuild a clientele. So that's also something to think about. So yeah, it's definitely something you don't want to like go into with like no thought. I hope that helps Claire. What if that was Claire Danes? <laughs> <laughs> well, is that her Finsta? Or like, what if she's like, oh my God, like, should I do like Homeland, like a reboot? It's only been off air for like three years, but maybe I can. But it would require like moving back to like Germany or something. They could have been clear dates. I cannot confirm or deny. Dorky Midori wants to know how to embrace single adult life and being your own friend. What a great question. And if this is secretly coming from Midori Ito, the 1994 world figure skating champion, I'm gonna freak out. Um, okay, wait. So really what you're talking about is like the journey to solitude. So loneliness means that you're like lonely when you're alone. Solitude means that you enjoy your own company. That took me like all of my 20s, several compulsivities, several addictions, lots of trauma to like get on that journey and like learn how to enjoy it. So I would say the sooner that you can connect to your own joy and a lot of times learning to be your own friend and like learning to journey into solitude at least for me being a survivor of trauma, it's about like connecting to your inner child and what brings your inner child joy. So for me, that's like figure skating, it's gymnastics. It's even like, I love to like needle points. Like my mom and my grandma did that and it makes me feel like connected to like joy and creativity. So it looks so different for so many other people. Like also my cats, my dogs, that makes me feel really connected to my inner like child joy. Cause I always wanted to have like a million cats and dogs. So I think just, 
not being afraid to ask yourself, what would make me happy? What would be really exciting for me? And then you also have to realize that when you ask yourself that question, it might be like learning to figure skate at 34 years old and people might have something to say about that or they may not. So just being really fearless about what it is that brings you joy, that will get you into that journey to solitude faster and kind of easier. Um, yeah. Good job, Midori. Your triple axle's everything. Okay, Svenja dot pie wants to know how do you deal with anxiety? Svenja, yoga is a really useful way that I uh, deal with anxiety. Um, lifting weights, working out, really just moving my body is one of the ways that I really help to deal with my mental health. When I don't take walks, when I'm not doing gymnastics, if I don't like move my body, it I just can get a little depressed, I can get anxious. So that's kind of how I do it. I also see a therapist, which I think is really important. I think all of us having a trusting relationship with a professional in our lives to know how to like handle different situations and know how to help us to nurture and grow. And I also think that a lot of anxiety can come from feeling like no one knows like all of your stuff and like everything that's going on and having a really great supportive therapist that you can be transparent and honest with can really, really help with that. For people to deal with anxiety, even knowing that you're dealing with anxiety is really important. So I congratulate you on like investigating your feelings enough to know that like, oh, I'm dealing with anxiety because that's, we have to like understand what the issue is in order for us to know how to deal with it. So I would just say like, congratulations on, you know, knowing what's going on with you. And that's really so great. Maggie Dale wants to know, how do you make new friends as an adult moving to a new city? <laughs> Maggie, don't move. Just, Maggie, just stay where you are. Okay, no, actually, that's not what I would say. Because I actually have really good experience in doing this because I moved like... I moved like nine times as an adult. And what I would say is this. Just know that it literally takes at least two years. It takes at least two years. And I think that for me, when I like first moved to like New York, or when I first moved to LA, you think that you're gonna like just meet friends right off the bat and it's gonna be really easy. But the point is this, you have to be patient with yourself. And I think another thing that really helps to like bring you towards people that have similar interests is to like do things that you're interested in. Maybe it's signing up for an art class. Maybe it's signing up for like a yoga class. Like just go do things that you like to do and you will meet people that have similar interests as you. Do that. So do do things that you're into doing and it'll be fun. And I think also just really be patient with yourself. It literally takes two years at least to like make new friends and like get used to a new city. Hess underscore live, so I assume live, ask, I'm about to be a first year high school math teacher. How can I support LGBTQ plus students who are struggling? Has underscore live. Yay for being an educator and like working to like help our young people. Go you. Um, my first question would be like, is there like an LGBTQIA plus like alliance? Like, you know, LGBTQIA plus straight alliance. Like I think they used to call it like gay straight alliance. Now there's like, like maybe one of those. Being aware of what your school's resources are for LGBTQIA plus students would be really, really helpful. Um, knowing what your community's resources are so that you can point um, folks to the direction of support um, would be really great. And then I think also all educators should have a really uh, strong working knowledge of LGBTQIA plus issues that folks that they would be teaching could be facing, such as like, how do we use pronouns correctly? How do we um, support someone if they're going through something with their family? How do we support someone if they're going through um, a coming out process that might be scary or like, you know, just very vulnerable for the person? So I think as an educator, making sure that you understand what kids are uh, up against and then what your school and community's resources are for young people will be really, really helpful. And thank you so much for your question. Sleepy Paprika wants to know, can I please have a pep talk from Jonathan to help me finish my PhD? Okay, honestly, Sleepy, Sleepy Paprika, I love PhDs. I love doctors. I think you guys are like so interesting. Yes, queen. I wish, did she say what her PhD is in? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, you can do this. It's kind of like in the words of Whoopi Goldberg in Sister Act 2. If when you wake up in the morning and all you can do is think about singing, then you a singer, girl. 
If you wake up in the morning and you can't think of anything but singing first, then you're supposed to be a singer, girl. Yes. You heard here. Oh, oh. P. H. D. P. H. D. Clap with us. P. H. D. P. H. D. One more time. P. H. D. Go, Sleepy Pepper Guy. You're number one. P. H. D. Yes. Kill Bap, K-I-L-B-A-P, not kill, uh, says, I just lost my sweet kitty of 13 years. Oh, God! How do I pull myself out of the depression and pain? This is what I do. You're probably asking the wrong person because I have what I call is the Charlotte's Web rule. So when one cat passes away, I don't even wait 24 hours. Like, I refuse to look at or sit with the grief. The cat passes away. I go straight to the animal shelter. Then they taught me out of not adopting like eight cats. And then I'm like, okay, I'll just take two. That's how I have five cats. And this is where I learned this from. My grandparents had a black teacup poodle named JP for 35 years. Because when one teacup poodle would die, they would just go literally adopt another black teacup poodle name it JP, start the process over, like it never happened. When my bug the second passed away, I went to this animal shelter and I was this close to adopting four. Like I had to have two adults look me in the eye and be like, honey, you cannot adopt four cats today. You have to pick two. And I was like, no, I want all four. And they were like, that would mean you would have six cats. And I was like, that's perfect. And they were like, you can pick two. This is not a good question for me. I'm like a bad influence, I'm sorry. Honestly, maybe my advice is good. Maybe you should just go get two. Oh, ooh, ooh, ooh! Or you can maybe volunteer at like an animal shelter if you don't want to adopt more cats. Because if I was really feeling my feelings out, like how much I miss my babies, I would never come out of my basement. I don't have a basement, but if I did have a basement, I would be down there eating powdered donuts for the rest of my life if I thought about how much I miss Bug the first and second. I really would. I just love little BBG and Tildy Tudors and Liza Meownelli and Harry Larry with names like Ann Baggy. Can't forget Baggy, he's so naughty. I really wanna get those other three. Oh my God, I just found three other at this animal shelter that are so cute. I don't even have a cat pass away, but I really want this six, seven, eight cat. I can't stop talking about him. Do you wanna see a picture? Is this your new cat? Its name was Dill. I feel so much closer to y'all. I feel like we really are like learning each other on this gorgeous YouTube channel. I would also say if you did not read the disclaimer that we did not play in this video up until this point, do not take my advice. Um, you could think about taking it. It might be good. Some of it's good. Some of it's bad. I am someone who's in recovery, who is also a hot mess, who is really good at hair, uh, good at running businesses, good at fixing these issues. Because, you know, at the end of the day, all you really have control of is like yourself. So just take my advice with a grain of salt. Unless it was good advice. And there probably was some good advice in there. There was, I do do good advice. I do. Have confidence in yourself, is what I would say. And thanks for coming to life school. Go you! And remember, P. H. D. Yes, those, you guys caught on so fast. And you know, like and subscribe, comment, everything, just questions. You're gorgeous. Okay, bye. Get out.